And I'm going to really try to share and hope I do a much better job than I do when I'm in my classroom. Um, so what, what I'm doing today is I'm actually sharing with you um, a uh, lesson plan that a friend of mine, Jessica Esposito, and I created in 2018. I teach AP Human Geography. I'm in this. I'm in the South in the United States, and um, it it's sometimes, and especially the city where I live, it's very difficult for students to wrap their head around what it means to be a refugee. And being a second generation American and, and knowing to some degree what my grandfather went through when he came to the United States in 1916, I, I was really struggling to, to find something other than you know standing up in front and lecturing. Um, so I began to do just some basic research online and I found an artist out in Oregon who does artwork based on the lives of refugees. It's called Unpacked. You can find it online. It's, it, and he travels around the country with it. I got in touch with him and I asked him, do you mind if I sort of tweak this a little bit for my students? And now what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you the lesson plan, but then I'm also going to show you the, um, the photographs of what my students created. So he said he was fine with me doing that. And Jessica and I sat down and, and we came up with this project, the things they carried, a refugee project. And it, the premise of it is really simple. And that is we put the students in groups of three and, we, and they were allowed to pick a refugee out of a list of refugees that I had created because I wanted to make sure that the, whoever they chose, um, there was enough information online for them to find it. Now, in, in the United States, in high school, we don't always do a lot of, lot of cross-curricular items, and, and it's not really popular for social studies students to write. But because I do write and because I do public speak, I wanted that to be a very key concept in what we were doing. So working in groups of threes, and I did assign the groups. I did not allow the students to pick their own because this would have never gotten finished. Um, I gave them a list of about 55 refugees they had, to, they had to do research and then pick one that they really liked and they couldn't overlap. So it was, it was quite an amazing thing to watch. But the first thing that the students had to do was they had to create a, a three to five page typed paper using MLA format. And I just want to say as a social studies historian, I really like the Chicago style so I I fought for the Chicago style, but my friend's a librarian and I lost to MLA, which is okay too, but I just like the Chicago style better. Um, they, got, they were graded on every single aspect of their work. So it wasn't just turn in a paper and get a grade. They, they, they had to do a biography sheet. They had to tell us what sources they got. That's a grade the citations were a grade. The biography itself, the written paper was a grade. So once they got the paper written, then we decided that we were gonna use digital learning to help our students become more accustomed to using the World Wide Web. A lot of them can do social media, you know, they can figure something out on TikTok, but don't ask them to do research on anything because they began to cry. So we wanted to make sure that they understood as many aspects of digital media as we could. So once they wrote the paper, then what they had to do was they had to go into our recording studio at our high school and they had to record 
the paper as if they themselves were the refugee reading the story. And, and this, this will all come together for you when, when we get to the end. So we've got the paper, we've got the recording. They had to then put the recording on QR codes. And I have to tell you, that was a new experience for me because I have never done that before. Um, so I actually got to learn how to use QR codes, not just use them, but create them. Um, and, and this is just samples of, they would print these off and then they would uh, turn them into me. I, or they could type their information in here and submit it, which is what I preferred, but I didn't always get that. Um, so I'm going to, and these particular settings here, they could go on and learn how to do MLA format. And some of these will actually put the citation in MLA format for you. So that just wanted to throw that in as well. So here are the list of, of, of refugees that they had. And of course they had the rubric. So once they put the presentation, their verbal, their oral presentation on a QR code, they had to go back and listen to the presentation, read their story, and pick out one specific section of that story that they thought would make a good work of art. And then they had to create the artwork inside of a suitcase to show you know, and, and they could show anything that they wanted to. So again, here are just some of the rubrics and, um, and, and some of the things, and we were as, as specific as we could be with this. Um, once, this whole project is gonna take about a month. So I actually, this was the first time I flipped my classroom and I'm very glad that I did because now, of course, with virtual learning, it's like, okay, I already know how to do this because I did it in 2018. So in our library, and if you're planning on doing this, let me just say, don't do it someplace where there's, um, where there's carpet. Do not do this someplace where there's carpet because you will be crying forever. Um, because most of the refugees, of course, that they chose are coming from Syria, they're coming from Yemen, they're coming from the Middle East, they're coming from desert areas, so we have lots of sand floating around, not only in the suitcases, but outside of it as well. Um, so they, they, they had to gather the materials that they needed, including suitcases, they had to, you know, go to thrift stores or, um, you know, ask mom and dad or just you know, take toys from brothers and sisters or, or whatever they had to do um, and bring those items in to create their work of art. And I'm going to right now, I'm going to stop sharing this screen. I'm going to share the artwork with you so that you can actually see what it is that I'm talking about. Let me go back here. Sorry. Go here. So, um, okay, okay, so here we go. Share. And we're going to stop that here. So, when all is said and done with this project, each group has a, has a suitcase. Inside the suitcase is it's something to do with their refugee, either a day in the life or some of them chose to show various aspects of this person's life. But on the suitcases are these QR codes. So when all this was finished, we set up the suitcases inside the library at our school. And what we, what we ask is that teachers bring down their classes uh, we invited our central office to come in. We invited the newspaper to come in. And as you walked through the, um, the art projects you had on earphones and you scanned the QR code with your phone. So you're listening to the story of the refugee as you're looking at the suitcases. 
Now, all of these refugees were from the 21st century. I have had teachers um, from various places across the United States who have actually utilized this in world history and done refugees, you know, from all from all eras, both in the United States and in other countries as well. But as you're walking into our library, what the students decided that they wanted to do is we have this big bulletin board that's right outside the door. And they created a road. So this is a road down the middle and you have sand, if you will, on either side. And it, the students have their hands cupped and in their hands, they're holding a hashtag that you could find on Twitter that had something to do with refugees. Oh, that's what she said. On either side of the road, in the, if you will, in the sand area, are photographs of either the refugees that they had or just refugees from the United Nations um, refugee site. And there are different sayings that are on here about refugees and about how our country is built on refugees and, and that kind of thing. So at the end, the, these are our bookcases that are in the center of our library. And on the ends of each side of the, of the um, bookcase are the photographs and names of the individuals whose suitcases are represented at the top of the bookcase. And here you go. So this is what we had. You know, we have, this was the only one that didn't use sand. I liked this one. Um, you know, so you could stand here and, and you could have your headphones in and, and you could listen to the person's story as you are looking at the suitcases that were created by our students. Now, once all of these were put into place, our students were then directed to take photographs of their specific suitcase and mention it, you know, mention the person, hashtag the person, contact the person using Twitter or Instagram or Snapchat or Facebook or however they wanted to do it um, to let them know that, hey, I've been studying you. I created this in your honor and, and I wanted you to see it. Several of these refugees are actually um, uh, in, in the entertainment business here in the United States. Now, I don't know these people, but my students do. Uh, Rita Ora, some reality show, I, I don't watch it, so I don't know. Um, there's a guy named Mo Amir, who's a comedian. He was featured on here. This is Rita Ora's um, The X Factor, I think is the name of the show. But what ended up happening about two weeks after they sent these out on social media was these people began to respond. Rita Ora actually contacted the three students who did this, who created this. Um, she retweeted and actually posted the suitcase on her Instagram site. They came running into my classroom in the middle of a lecture and I'm trying to pretend like I'm really excited but I have no clue who that person is, but good job. Um, this gentleman down here, Farhu Jafari, is actually a rapper in England, and he's actually still in contact with the three students that created this. But what ended up happening from this lesson was, A, my, my, my students were featured in our local newspaper, which is always a big deal, but several of my students actually changed their college majors. Several of my seniors, uh, one of my seniors was actually accepted into American University. And one of the things that they told her when she went to visit the, the school in Washington, DC was that they were so impressed with what she did on her suitcase that that was one of the final decisions that they had to, to bring her to their school. One of my students is now working or is now interning with the United Nations. She's, I can't remember what her major is, 
but she actually started a nonprofit organization here in Hickory that has, let, has now f infiltrated into the state of North Carolina to help refugees that are coming into our state. Um, this seems really simple. And at first, I just thought this will be something for them to do and it'll keep them busy until I really started listening to them and watching them create this. And I understood that they got it, you know, that, that they understand that these people are leaving someplace that there's no hope for them, possibly, and that they're coming to a place where there's more hope than what they have ever known. You know, the, the understanding of how hard it is to go from point A to point B. And I wanted to share this, and I really do appreciate the ability to share it, because again, even though it is really simple, and it's just a really simple assignment, it really opens up students' eyes because they're creating something not only digitally, but physically. They're learning how to write. They're learning how to work in groups. But more than that, they're, they're learning that outside where we live in the United States, things are not always that great. And that the refugee crisis in the United States is presented, depending on what you're looking at, is presented one way, but in reality, it's a lot more involved than just I'm crossing the border to come into your country. There's a lot more to it. And so, that's it's a very short presentation here this morning, but but that's that's it in a nutshell. Um, so thank you very much. I appreciate you listening.